Hey there everyone and welcome to regular expression. Now before we get started and write some of the regular expression and try to understand what all these symbol means, I want to point your attention something here. Now here you can see we have got a JavaScript engine and a PCRE server. Now I will talk more about what are these regular expression engines in a minute. But first of all, we need to understand what is the difference between JavaScript and PCRE. This is moreover related to history of PCRE because PCRE comes from the history. But yeah, I know I do understand that a lot of programmers don't like history lessons or PowerPoint presentation lessons. But this is interesting. This is what makes the current regular expression what they are actually. So yes, I won't be writing any regular expression in this video. If you want to skip this, go ahead, completely skip that. You won't be missing anything. But this is interesting. You'll love that. So let me talk about these PCRE and how these are actually working. And yes, you will be amazed to know that a lot of even seasonal developers don't know what this PCRE, they just say this is used for PHP and all these stuff. Now let me take you back onto the history lesson and explain from where this PCRE comes from. Now from the very early of the computer stage, the whole goal of computer programming language is to make it as close as possible with the human brain. And this is what we are doing currently right now in 2018. We are trying to get as close as a human brain via machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now there is a lot more to discuss about that topic like Bayes theorem and stuff. But in the earlier days around 1950s, this was not much evolved. The closest thing that you have got at that time was first developed in a paper of neuroscience. Yes, this actually whole regex things came up from the neuroscience paper. Now in that, a person designed a thing known as regular sets and called it as a regular algebra. Now at that time, this regular algebra was termed as regular expression. The symbols used in regular expression was called as uh, regular sets. And uh, this is the whole thing which was closest to replicating the human brain because it could have find out the things like needle in a haystack. Now, but this was not introduced in computers really a long time after that. In 1970s, ish like that, don't get a date on the very spot on there. Kevin Thompson, the pioneer in the computer industry, you should really Google about him. He introduced this machine, alert, this uh, regular expression thing into the grab. Uh, grab was kind of a editor-ish uh, thing for the early Unix. Let's not go into much of the depth. But Ken Thompson was the pioneer guy who brought us the regular expression into the computer from that paper. Really a remarkable journey. But uh, later on, this was not much being used uh, till like 90s, 87-ish thing, something. And then introduced a new thing, which is POSIX. Uh, POSIX basically is Portable Operating Interface, uh, Portable Operating System Interface, and X is just for user interface uh, because it was there in the Unix. So that's it. So people, a lot of from various countries just sat down that, hey, we need some standardization. And that exact time, the POSIX was formed and it was clear that we are going to be having two types of regular expression, the BRE and the ERE. Now, the BRE was like basic regular expression and ERE was extended regular expression. What we see right now in 2018 is ERE, extended regular expression. We don't use uh, BREs anymore. The BRE last time it was used was in Apache version 1, which is now no longer exist, uh, almost no longer exist. So what we are seeing right now is ERE. Now you might be wondering, hey, uh, this is all good, this is all great, but where does this PCRE fits in? Now the PCRE comes into the picture. Now after the POSIX formation, almost exact same time, there was a guy known as Henry Spencer. He created a library in C uh, just to make sure that the regular expressions are consistent. Now, in that early days, a lot of programmers were writing their regular expression in their own fashion. And he thought, you know what? We need a consistent thing so that people can just focus on implementation of these regular expression rather to be worried about redefining the things. So he wrote a library in C, Henry Spencer, for the purpose of consistency. Now, just after that, uh, like a couple of years ahead, Larry Wall came up and released the language Perl, which was like the shining star of that time, just like what Python is doing right now. It was really the language which was designed so that programming can be fun and can be much more powerful as compared to C. Really the most powerful language for early days. Uh, I remember the days when I coded in the Perl at early time. It was really the star at that time. In that Perl, this Henry Spencer library was introduced quite a lot. And this made everything amazing. 
And from that time, this implementation of Henry Spencer's library was known as a Perl compatible regular expression. Remember PCRE, Perl compatible regular expression. Now this compatibility was so amazing, so smooth that everybody, every language wanted this kind of library in their programming language as well. JavaScript, PHP, Python, and even Java, or maybe uh, some of the MySQLs as well. Pretty much everybody wanted this PCRE in their programming language. And this is why their PCRE comes up. Now, just after that, there were engines being designed that how we are gonna process this language. And that time there were subtle difference. Still, there are subtle differences in browser-based and the server-based. Uh, which uses the PCRE engine, but as of 2018, the differences are so subtle that nobody even care about it. All the symbols mean exactly the same in PCRE and in JavaScript base engines as well. So right now we don't have to worry much about it. I know this was a quite a history lesson, but with, this was interesting. You came to know about Ken Thompson's, uh, Ken Thompson, uh, sorry, he's a great pioneer. I get so excited taking his name even. Then Henry Spencer came into the picture, Larry Wall came into the picture. So you should definitely read about them. But again, uh, this is what we have. Talking about the current situation of regular expression, you don't have to worry about anything of it, okay? Whether you switch on to PCRE or JavaScript, they're gonna give us the exact same result. Just onto a one side note, here you can see that we have got this two slashes and then a G. I will talk about a little bit more about modes and everything, but just to give you a little bit hint here, uh, the program grep is actually responsible for these two slashes. It used to be like G for global mode, then a slash, and then you write uh, something like regular expression. And then in order to print it, there was a slash P. And from there, the grep actually came into the word. Notice G and R from regular expression E, and then P for printing it, so grep. And later on, the popularity was so high of the grep that it, it became a standalone program. Quite a lot of history, but this is all interesting and exciting, makes regular expressions so good. So we'll be talking more about what are these slashes, what they do, and what is the slash G and all of these things mean. Uh, but let's just keep these videos short and simple. This was quite a history lesson about the PCRE. I promise I won't be bothering you much with the history in the future of this regular expression series at all. Uh, so let's just go ahead and talk about these modes. What are these global and case insensitive and all those modes? And we're gonna start writing our very first regular expression. So that's it for this video and I'll surely catch you up in the next one.